Welcome to the module on financial management. The learning objectives of this module is to understand the importance of funds, definition of finance and the need for its management, an in-depth understanding of financial policy of the organizations in the development sector, human resource requirements and the roles of the responsibilities of the personnel working in the financial management department and to understand the statutory requirements and registration formalities for financial advantages of an organization. What is finance and why does it need to be managed? So, the finance is not just about money but all resources in its totality. In simpler terms, finance is the sum total of assets and liabilities of an organization which includes money, valuables, movable and immovable property and also loans. Thus, money and money related operations within an organization are equated with finance. Accountability plays an important role in the sustenance of any organization. The word blacklist often trouble these organizations which deliver goods on the behest of the funding organizations. This is the important that organizations finance management is an accurate as it could be. Now, we will see the process of the financial management. The issue of financial management is a complex process. It is surely difficult to put the process in place, but once done the system runs mechanically increasing its efficiency if followed meticulously. An important and initial means to take things forward is to establish an accounting policy that will ensure recording and monitoring financial transactions. Documentation of an accounting policies and procedures important because it provides clarity regarding internal process. Its purpose is to help the organizations working in this sector. First, recording all financial transactions, second monitoring and controlling of the expenditures, third to satisfying the statutory reporting requirements and finally to ensuring timely and accurate financial management reporting to donors and grant givers. Now, we will discuss on accounting policy. The accounting policy in simpler term is to strategize the financial system in the form of a structure that works every moment starting from the day to day bookkeeping to vouchers of payments and receipts to donations received. It also extends to the periodical auditing and submission of statement of accounts to the authorities concerned. Key aspects of accounting policy, the first is income. An organization in the development sector receives funding from different sources. Thus, the primary concern and aspect of the regular monitoring is income. Income of an organization is received and generated in different forms including grants from the donors, member subscription, interest received from the bank deposits and on investments, grants, cash donations and other such sources. Some organizations also receive income through trainings imparted and sale of the materials produced through various activities. The second is expenditure. Organizations incur expenditure for its activities and payments including office management. Expenditures are categorized into recurring and non-recurring expenses. Investments into assets both movable and immovable are one time expenses while salaries to staff communication conveyance are recurring on a monthly basis. Next is audit. The formatted tallying of the income and expenditure so as to derive the periodical statement of accounts is called auditing. It is significant as it reflects the health status of an organization. So, the next process is banking. 
in view of maintaining transparency regarding the financial transactions, effective banking plays an important role. The choice of a bank, option of type of account to be opened and the multiple accounts to be opened for the particular projects or location are to be prudently taken by the management of an organization from time to time. The second aspect is account management. One of the most important aspect of financial management policy is the maintenance of an appropriate accounting system within an organization. In this system, you can define the basis on which the accounting will be started and the methods applied for maintaining accounts including day to day transactions. In which the first aspect is bookkeeping. In view of systematically monitoring the financial transactions on a regular basis in an organization, bookkeeping of different kinds are necessary. We will see about ge general ledger. What is a general ledger? A general ledger will contain transactions of all kind including the receipts and payments. Transactions in a general ledger will often project specific with grants received for a particular project and the expenditure inquired. It is also consists of the balance sheet of the project which reflects the surplus or deficit. The next is day book. That a day book is a book which kept for daily expenses maintaining. Here the daily expenses are recorded in the day book. It also contain amounts paid from different accounts including the petty cash that is intended for incidental expenditures. Petty cash is a certain amount in cash at the disposal of the accountant to be utilized for day to day emergency and incidental expenses. Now we will be discussing on cash receipts and cash vouchers. It is necessary to maintain separate receipt and voucher books which will provide documentary evidences supporting the general ledger and day book. These two books which furnish specific details of income and expenditure during periodical auditing. The receipts and vouchers should clearly specify the amount paid for and the amount received including details of the payments done or money received in the form of check or cash. The next is travel log book. In case of an organization having one or more vehicles which is used for official purposes during activities a log book which reflects the utilization of vehicles. The content in which this log book include the vehicle number, extent of the travel on a particular day and the fuel filled with the amount paid. The bills of the fuel however shall be duly remitted to the to be included in the day book. The next is record maintenance. Various files need to be maintained regarding the different aspects of financial dealings in an organization. The official documents concerning various certification to the organization including the income tax exemption certificates like ATG, 35 account, 12A, PAN card details and the FCRA registration details and the trust deeds should be properly maintained in box files so that it is readily available in case of any inspection routine or surprise visits. It may be also be advisable to maintain a folder or files containing duplicate files of these original documents. In today's world of office automation, a scanned copy of the documents will go a long way in assessing the same anywhere, anytime. Now we will see on payroll. Every organization should maintain the details of their employees 
not just in terms of their salaries but also the individual taxation benefits given if any like employees provident fund or gratuity service clauses regarding finance as agreed upon during the time of appointment. Now, we are going to discuss on human resources involved in financial resource management. Human resource is a vital component in financial management of an organization. Understanding the roles and responsibilities of individuals in the finance department will facilitate smooth financial functioning of an organization. The first is board of trustees in financial management. Though the board of trustees or individuals in case of single author trust play a significant role in the decisions made on mobilizing resources and have a final say in the expenditure they are seldom involved in the day to day operations. The board of trustees plays an important role in decision making on long term basis in realizing the aims and objectives of the organization. However, in some cases one of the trustees may be assigned the responsibility to monitor the day to day financial dealings in an organization. Other personnel involved in the financial management are the director, the finance, accountants, internal, external, auditors and general staff. Now, we are going to discuss about the process of budgeting in an organization and the concept of budgeting. The budgeting is a complex and continuous process. Budget preparation is a participatory process in an organization. Budgeting assumes significance as it is an indicator of the roadmap and guides the functioning of an organization. The location of the available resources plans to mobilize more resources for translating the vision of the organization into action, alternative plans in case of adverse situation among other aspects are considered while working on the budget for a particular financial year. Now, what is the physical requirement for financial management? Physical requirement for financial management takes some serious thinking to set the process in place, but the same becomes irrelevant if a supporting infrastructure is not provided to the finance department. Apart from the office space, computers, ledger books and folders, it is advisable to develop a computer information system CIS which will ensure appropriate information system used by the organization. There is a need to ensure no unauthorized access to the organization computer systems are taking place in an organization. Now, we will discuss on registrations and certifications for financially strengthening an organization. The registration of an organization is the first step to spread its aims and objectives among the target groups. An organization will not hold legal sanction and the benefits associated with it if it does not get registered with the regulatory bodies that govern the policies of the development sector. The knowledge of the registration rules is an absolute requisite in the financial management of an organization in the development sector. We can also see that Financial management of NGOs is not only really governed by the Union Ministry of Finance but also by the Ministry of Home Affairs when it comes to the matter of foreign funding. Now, regarding the income tax exemption clauses, an organization can avail income tax exemption by getting itself registered and complying within certain other formalities. But such registration does not provide any benefit to the persons making donations. The Income Tax Act has certain provisions which offer tax benefits to the donors. All NGOs should avail the advantage of these provisions to attract potential donors. Section 35 SC, the general government approves certain NGOs 
and notifies them as eligible for project or schemes for the purpose of section 35 ec the donor can avail 100 percentage tax exemption under this clause the central government has constituted a national committee to identify projects and schemes to be notified under section 35 ac of the income tax act now we will see on section 80 g under this section the donor is eligible for deductions up to 50 percentage foreign contribution regulation act of 2010 it is a national security legislation to con consider the law to regulate the acceptance and utilization of foreign contribution foreign contributions are channelized through this system it has a twin objective of removing the difficulties faced by stakeholders in the repealed FCRA of 1976 and to increase transparency and accountability of the non-governmental organizations for prevention of improper utilization of foreign contributions. Now we will be summing up the module. This chapter has dealt with various aspects of financial management of an organization in minute details right from day to day bookkeeping to budgeting and other legal aspects. We have also highlighted some provisions of law and registration that can benefit an organization in terms of income tax exemption. Funds strengthen the organization but its proper management sustains an organization. Thank you very much for attending this module.